Welcome to this transfer functions quiz. We're going to go through a little bit of material on assessing some of your knowledge on transfer functions. So let's go ahead and get right into it with uh, questions number one and three. We're going to use this process diagram where we have some inlet that's coming in here. This is going to be U1 and then the outlet is going to be X1. So this is our reactant right here and then our product and then we also have the same thing in a parallel reactor down here with U2 and X2 and then we're going to have a blending mixer that's going to blend the output of both of those together to produce Y. So we want to look at this in terms of transfer functions and if we come right over here we see these same signals U and X but now we have these blocks that represent the units like the reactors okay so G1 and G2 and then G3 represents our blender so we have uh, a couple questions here that we're going to go through uh, what is the expression for the reactor outlet X2 alright so here is X2 and there's X2 in terms of input U2 all right, so this is just a basic transfer function if we have input U and we have a transfer function G with output Y, then the output Y is going to be equal to G times U. And that's the same for this one as well, except we just have U2 and G2. And so the answer would be C. Let's go on to the next one now. What is the expression for the mixer outlet X3 in terms of U1 and U2? So here's our X3 right here. And this one, uh, we have to have this extra X3 variable uh, right here because we're combining X1 and X2. But those are just coming in to the same blender right here. So x3 is just a, a extra variable that we've created just to facilitate uh, the combination of x1 and x2. And so x3 is going to be equal to x1 plus x2. Because they're in series and they're added together, if they're in parallel, then x3 would be x1 times x2. We're going to add these two together right here. Uh, that come into X3. And then X1, that one is just going to be G1 times U1. And this one is going to be G2 times U2. And so if we look for that solution here, um, it's going to be this one right here. Okay, so we have... Um, Let's see. No, that's not it. This one uh, is going to be this one down here at the bottom. Okay, so we have uh, this is also true, but it's not in terms of U1 and U2. Uh, this one would not be true here uh, either, okay, and we're not multiplying them. So this is going to be our correct answer. All right, now let's go on to blender outlet Y in terms of U1 and U2. So let's just take it one step further. We have X3 in terms of U1 and U2. And now we just need to calculate our final Y value. All right, so the final Y value is going to be Y of S. Okay, I can put S there, or I can just leave that out if I know that these are in the Laplace domain. I can say Y equals G3 times X3. And then I can just plug in what I had for X3 um, before. And it's just going to be multiplied by G3. So there's X3 right here. All right. And so this is going to be the one where G3 is just multiplied uh, by this quantity right here. Because I just have one more step to get to Y. All right, let's go on to number four now. Uh, now, this doesn't use those same 
uh, value uh, that same diagram okay this is just a question we're going to select the two correct answers here but what are the requirements to obtain a transfer function all right for transfer functions anything in the Laplace domain we need to linearize it uh, before we can convert it over and so in general we cannot do nonlinear equations directly we have to do linear equations that's going to be one of them all right and then the other question is can you have multiple inputs or just a single input to your transfer function okay so if i had something like this all right i can't have that i'd have to add those two together first before they go into the transfer function so I would have to add them because a transfer function can only have one input and one output coming into that block so here we just have a differential equation with one input and one output all right let's go on to the next one this is the gain of the transfer function uh, g of s equals uh, 5 times s plus 1 divided by s plus 3 squared. So we know that the gain of a system, we'll just say kp equals, and then we'll do the limit as s goes to 0 of our gain. All right, so if I plug that in and just do the limit as s goes to 0, then I'm going to have 5 times 0 plus 1 divided by 0 plus 3 squared. Right, and that is going to come up with 5 divided by 3 squared, or 5 ninths. So the correct answer is right here. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, quiz I'll just show you a place where you can access this if you just come to the um, process dynamics and control course apmonitor.com slash pdc and then go to course schedule this one is down here on transfer functions and it's going to be this quiz right here and for each of these you can also select the answer and if it's incorrect it'll give you a hint on why that's incorrect. So if you thought that any of these were supposed to be correct, but they weren't, you can go there and just check and see what was wrong with that answer. Okay, so uh, there are all the correct uh, solutions. And all right, and we'll do linear equations and differential equations. And then what is the gain? If you selected the wrong one, it would tell you a hint there.